Hello and welcome to Called Bank Sports, where we bring you all things Utah Jazz. Um, first things first, got to give some shout outs to some local teams. Congratulations to the BYU women's soccer team for um, advancing to the national title game this Monday against Florida State. So we're rooting for you. Um, congratulations to the University of Utah for finally getting over the hump and beating the Oregon Ducks for the second time in three weeks to make it to their first Rose Bowl. And um, we're also giving a shout out to RSL, who has somehow <laughs> managed to um, make it to the Western Conference Finals after two games that I don't know how they won. But they're playing um, Portland today for a chance to go to the MLS Finals. So we are cheering for them. But first things first, um, and most importantly here, we have to talk about the Jazz. Um, last night, they were able to beat the the Boston Celtics um, by shooting an absolutely just insane amount of threes. I believe it ended up being that they were 27 of 52 from behind the arc um, for over 50% from, um, from three and also making the most threes against um, the Boston Celtics and the history of the Boston Celtics. So it was a really good game. I was there, but there were still plenty of problems. And I think the biggest problem, um, the problem that Dale and I talked so much about last year and has frankly caused the jazz, um, just so many problems this year is turnovers. Um, and just the fact that I, w Dale, you shared a stat with me before. Was it that the jazz were turning the ball over th um, three more times than the league average and allowing, or what not was it? Than, exactly? Not than the league average, but then, then their opponents. So okay. on average they're they'll have three more turnover. Well, it's like 2.8 or something like that. We can round here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We'll round. We'll make it sound as bad as we can. Okay, so it was 2.8 or three more turnovers than their opponents and allowing four more shots than their opponents. And a lot of that, I mean, obviously has to do with the turnovers. Like, those numbers are pretty close. And mm -hmm. turning the ball over leads directly to shots for the opponent, um, as well as allowing offensive rebounds. And last night, the Jazz were able to out-offensive rebound the, um, the Celtics. But the Jazz had a total of, let me, 20 turnovers. To six Ooh. turnovers for the Celtics. Um, the Jazz gave up 31 points on turnovers to 10 points for the Celtics. So that's why it was a close game last night. It was turnovers. Um, yeah, Boston went 22 of 22 from the free throw line, which is quite impressive. But had the Jazz turned the ball over significantly less, Boston doesn't get 10 more field goals than the Jazz and really isn't able to get back into the game after the Jazz dominated the first quarter. So that's, um, while last night the Jazz thankfully were able to get offensive boards, um, from a turnover perspective, last night is kind of the worst case scenario for the Jazz with the best outcome. Um, they were still able to pull off the win, but they need to get these turnovers under control if they want to have any chance at making it to the finals. Yeah, because... If you look at it, the Jazz, like, it's weird that they're, cons like, they're the second highest in point differential in the league. And it's weird that they're giving up four more shots than, like, their opponent gets to shoot four more times and they're still second highest in the league. Um, I don't know if this is just the Jazz defense, like, even though they're turning the ball over, they're forcing their opponents to have a low field goal percentage, or if it's just the Jazz are on fire on offense. I, the past three games, I think it's there on fire on offense. They scored over 120 points each each of the past three games, but uh, they've had some lower scoring games as well. So I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Um, there's like some stats that make the Jazz look like they're one of the best teams in the league. There are some stats that if you were to give me just a couple stats isolated, I would guess that they like at best they'd be a French playoff team. So I think like polar opposites kind of there might be one of the reasons why even though the jazz as a team are probably top two three teams in the league but they're not winning as many games as as their talent really could yeah and i think the big reason why their differential is so big is because when the jazz win a game against a bad team they win that game like the jazz beat the rockets by 31 points um that really helps your differential. They beat Oklahoma City by 21 points um, in the home opener. And then when they lose, 
they typically have a really bad game, but it's still a close game. Um, like they lost to Chicago by eight points. Um, their biggest loss is to Indiana by 11. And there were the ejections in that game. And so that game's kind of an outlier. And well, frankly, in both games against the heat, the jazz got blown out and were just able to mount a fourth quarter comeback to, you know, help their differential look a lot better while not really impacting the game at all. So differential really doesn't mean a lot to me. And it has meant a lot in the past, but because I'm watching the jazz night in and night out, I know that like differential means nothing because when you're losing, when you're barely losing to the good teams and also barely losing to some bad teams, the blowout wins against bad teams or against mediocre teams don't make me feel better about the fact that you're losing to, you know, Miami both times you've played them. Um, that you've picked up a loss against Memphis and a loss against New Orleans. Like the jazz, obviously um, I, I just feel like now because the jazz in my mind, even with um, golden state, the um, Brooklyn and Phoenix, obviously being the top of the league, the jazz are still the top of the league in my mind. I mean, they have the fourth best record, right? Uh, at least I believe so. So because they're still the top of the league in my mind, Every game should be won and every game should be competitive and you should be beating good teams. And I feel like that's, those are fair, um, you know, takes to have for a team that we believe is championship caliber. So that that's kind of what I see is like the eye test isn't where you want it to be. And you want to see the jazz get back into a rhythm like they were last year when they were on their 20 plus game win streak. Yeah. And if, if you think about it, it we're still earlier in the season um, there have been a handful of teams in NBA history who have had less than like 10 subpar games in the season. Uh, the Jazz have had a couple subpar games early. Which yeah. Kind of a slower start. The Warriors and Suns and Nets haven't really had many of those. So as the season goes on, I, I expect the Jazz to, because if you look at the, per- like, I think Jazz are fourth in the league overall. But if you look at the percentages, there's a big jump off between uh, as far as win percentage between those three teams and the Jazz. Um, yeah, I expect it to kind of even out over the season, both the Jazz playing better and those three teams having a couple bad games throughout the season. Yeah. And I mean, once you all of a sudden say, well, let's say the Jazz didn't lose to New Orleans last week, didn't lose to Memphis. Um, and let's say they beat Orlando. Um, three games that I think we can agree they should have won. There's um, Orlando was the end of a long road trip, um, but again, still should have won. And all of a sudden the jazz's record is looking a lot closer to those other teams. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, it, it's not, it's not like the season's lost. I mean, obviously we saw last year that even if you go into the fight, into the, um, playoffs with some good wins and a good team, you can still lose, especially due to injuries. So right now, I feel like I'm just kind of confident that the jazz are going to get a top three seed in the West. um, top four worst case scenario in my mind. And that hopefully things are clicking come playoff time and they're able to be successful with that seed. It's obviously not ideal, but um, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And, and this probably doesn't show this isn't going to display how good the jazz are, but it's probably going to show our confidence in the jazz. But Around this point in the season, last season, um, we were talking about, did the Jazz need to make some trades? Is it time to trade Joe Ingles? Uh, is is Rudy Gobert, like, can we get a great return for Rudy Gobert, potentially? Uh, is Bogdanovich, is there is there a market for him? Can we get maybe a more athletic 3 and D kind of player um, who, who can help us more out on the, on the on-ball defensive end? And I don't think, like, that hasn't even crossed our minds I, I think we like our roster. Obviously, like if if a good trade comes up, if we can upgrade a player, I, I'm not against it. But I think the Jazz have a great roster. I think we have the talent to go as far as the Jazz want to go, which is we'll go win an NBA fi- title. It's just I think there's some players that maybe aren't playing to their potential that maybe need to step up. And um, I know there's going to be that pressure is always going to be on Donovan Mitchell, but I was hoping he would have uh, a more of a breakout season than he has been having. He still has time to turn it around, but he's kind of having 
the same season that we've seen from him in the past couple of years uh, and shooting not terribly efficient, scoring less than 25 points a game and around the four or five rebounds and assists mark. I would like him to take a bigger step up and and take control of games more often. Right now, he's playing a very team game, which is great, but uh, it's it's not like when it comes to those moments, you need to have a guy who's ready to turn it on at any point. And Donovan Mitchell's supposed to be that guy, but I'm not seeing that from him every game. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing, um, since you mentioned that he's averaging um, under 24 points a game, what, um, which is actually... Dang, I didn't expect that. He's actually the, averaging the 14th highest points um, in the NBA. That just feels really low to be that high. Um, but the biggest thing that stands out to me when I'm looking at it is looking at his three-point shooting in games. So, I mean, against the Celtics, he was 6 of 14 for over 40%, and he scored 34 points. Awesome. Against Portland, he was 3 of 8 um, for 38%, 30 points. Um New Orleans in the second in the second game, he was three of six, um, 21 points. Um, first game against New Orleans, two of seven for 16. Um, last game we played against Oklahoma City, one of seven. He had 13 points. Um, Memphis, three of 10, 18 points. So there's kind of a correlation here when you're looking at, I mean, obviously the number of threes he's getting, but if he has a good three-point percentage, then he typically has a pretty good game. And when you have games like Oklahoma City, where he shot less than 15% from three, um, Memphis, where he shot 30%, Toronto, where he shot um, less than 29%, like that's really what's hurting um, him overall. Since his um, three point percentage for the season right now is um, 33%, right? So you move that up to 36. Yeah. I mean, fine. Like that's bottom of the league. But if you move that up to 36, all of a sudden he's averaging probably about 25 points a game or t- no, like, or over 24. You move that up to 40, he's averaging 26. So I think that's kind of what we're waiting on on Donovan is for him to consistently be making, um, I think I want to say 37% of his threes a game. Um, and he's going to have bad games, obviously. But if he's able to get to that point where he's making 37% of his threes every game, the Jazz... I'm going to feel a lot more confident about where the Jazz are at. I know if if he can just get to the free throw line one or two more times per game, or hit one more three every game, uh, like I don't think it's a it's it's not like he needs to go out and average 35, but he needs to come out and be a little bit more aggressive on a couple more plays. Or yeah, uh, like you said, dial in his shot so his percentage, like he just hits one more a game, and like that can be the difference. Um, I, I, like I know. Like the Jazz, there's not many games that they lose by a th- within a three point bucket, but you get that three pointer earlier in the fourth quarter, and then all of a sudden, if you're trying to make a comeback, that's that's a lot closer. That you 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 have that energy from that. So it like just one more shot a game can make a big difference as long yeah. as he's not having to take four more four extra shots to hit that extra that one shot. And and he'll get there. I'm confident that he'll get his percentage back up and that that's going to help the Jazz overall. And as a team, I mean, I don't have the stats pulled up, but their three-point percentage in each game has been greatly increasing. And if they're able to continue on that upward trajectory, right now they're shooting 36.6% a game, which is a lot better than earlier in the season when the team average was 30% per game. So once the Jazz get back up to, you know, 38, 39% a game, I feel like they're going to take that next step and start looking like Golden State and Oklahoma, um, almost said Oklahoma City. Um, <laughs> Golden State and Phoenix have been looking this year. Phoenix has looked just a tiny bit better than Oklahoma City. <laughs> Not by much. Not by much. I mean, (laughs) Oklahoma City can beat the Lakers. I don't think the Suns beat the Lakers this year. So, I mean, that's basically what we gauge how good a team is. (laughs) Uh, That's how we gauge how good a team is, right? If they can beat the Lakers? Um, Not anymore. (laughs) No, no, definitely not anymore. Yeah, I I agree with, like, we we know the Jazz have what it takes. They, They hit 27 threes against the Celtics last night. That's huge. They have they have that ability as a team. It's just um, they they don't always bring that as a team, and so it's like 
the the interesting thing is with the three pointers are the reasons they're winning games. Um, like they have a better field goal. Pers- like if you go back to that differential of they're letting the other teams take more shots. Yeah, it's it's it like most of that comes down to the Jazz are just hitting more threes than the other team, which you don't need to take as many shots if you're hitting as many threes. But you see those games that they lose, a lot of them their three point their three pointers aren't going in, and so yeah. Come playoff time, if we can get closer to even on turnovers, kind of balance that out a little bit more, for, fix that ball control issue. That uh, um, I think that's that's a lot of what it is. Is not great decisions on passes. Then that makes a huge deal come playoff time because then if your three point shooting is down and it's game six and you're trying to close out a series, you can still be confident that you're going to take at least as the same number of shots. And I think the jazz, when they're in that situation, they'll win almost every single game because right now they're winning, taking eight, eight to uh, 12 points less in field goal attempts for a game uh, potentially. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be big and they definitely have a lot of things to work on. And I'm very intrigued for the rest of December. Um, there is not a game that I don't think the jazz can win for the rest of December. Now, obviously I don't think they're going to go undefeated for the rest of December and the very first game of January on literally new year's day is golden state. So that's going to be an entertaining game, but the jazz are very capable of winning the games put before them um, this month. And frankly, I'm intrigued to see how golden state and how um, the Suns continue to play. So it's an exciting time to be a jazz fan and it's, there's a lot of games left. I think there's about 60 games left in the year. So it's it's a while till playoffs. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, please comment where you think the Jazz are going, if you think the Jazz are going to be able to pass Golden State um, and Phoenix, or if they're going to end up with the third seed this year. Um, please follow wherever you're at. Um, like, um, comment something else if that's what you want to do. And thanks again, and go Jazz!